This is the 217 Recovery Podcast with Corey Winfield. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you probably want to get yours up a little, little bit closer. Okay. You can grab just. All right. And co-host Marnie Winfield. I got nothing. Well, you know, let's, we, let's talk recovery. Is, is that, are we supposed to finish that sentence or something? No. It is the 12th of December, 2021. My name is Corey Winfield. My name is Marnie Winfield. And this is the 217 Recovery Podcast. Very special episode today. Normally on Sundays, we just, well, hell, Lately, who knows? I know. <laughs> who knows if you're even going to get one on Sundays now? But now we'll get back in the swing of things once we start feeling a little bit better. But normally you get the Marnie's Sunday night replay, but today it's a special episode. Mm-hmm. It's the anniversary episode of our wedding day. One year ago today, <laughs> we walked down the aisle. Well, well you walked down I some walked stairs down the stairs and then right came makeshift. Off. Yeah, and I said my vows, which were not as prepared, it just didn't come out right. It was just fine. Yeah. You got the gist of it. I did. I, you know. No, you're making it out like it was sloppy. It was, was great. It was all right. It was only 15 minutes long, the whole ceremony, which is beautiful. Well. It was a COVID wedding. Yeah. Which is great. Mm-hmm. I mean, we wanted to invite our brothers and sisters and a bunch of people. We wanted to pay for your dinner and stuff, but we just, you know, had a COVID wedding instead. Yeah. I'm telling you what, people, like, That's the way to get go. on Pinterest, like, Google some how to make a wedding at home thing. It was beautiful. It really was. It was awesome. Yeah. And you don't have that awkward moment of, who are you? Why are you at my wedding? Oh, you're the boyfriend of this person. Wait, honey, do you know who's that? Mm-hmm. Why is he eating all the food? <laughs> like, who is this guy? None of that. Yeah. Didn't have to return 18 toasters. Mm-mm, nope. Yeah. No, it was great. It really was. And very intimate. And yeah, it was a year ago today. So we, we made it a year. Yeah, we did. I've never been married this long before. <laughs> Neither have I. <laughs> of course, that's our it's first crazy. marriage for, for both of us. So it's going great, though. Would you say I've changed a lot since we got married? Um, Not a lot. No. Some. Lost a little weight. Yeah, but that's just physical stuff. Oh. Yeah, I'd say you're more determined. You work a hell of a lot more. (laughs) That's for sure. Uh Uh-huh. But other than that, I mean, I can spot when you're angry at me. Mm Mm-hmm. Pretty pretty good now. (laughs) Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, that doesn't happen very often. Mm Mm-hmm. Once a month, I'd say. (laughs) Oh, my God. No. But, I mean, a year, it's, I mean, yeah, it's definitely a milestone, Mm -hmm. for sure. Um, Does it feel like a year to you? No. The first six months were kind of slow, because it seemed like we were married for so much longer. And I'm like, wait, oh, that's only like three months ago. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then we took our first vacation together, which was sweet, Mm -hmm. went to California. And that was kind of like a, well, that was around the six month mark. So I was kind of like, all right, you know, and then after that, it just flew by Mm -hmm. and it's like, whoa, it's Christmas already, you know, like, holy crap. Yeah. You know, and I'm glad we got married on 12, 12. It's very easy to remember. There's that. It's close to Christmas. Mm-hmm. You know, which kind of worked out because I was trying to pass off one of your Christmas gifts <laughs> as a anniversary gift because mm-hmm. <laughs> you got me some sweet stuff. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, here's your card and this little thing I made you with the cricket machine. But it was all right. But I felt like I under delivered. So yeah. I was like, here you go. Then it's, it's not about it's not about the gifts, though. No, it's not. And it's, it's the ones that came from the heart and the sweet ones, you know, like it was funny because you got me a picture frame with a picture in it. And you're like, it's not about the picture that's in it. It's about the frame. And I was the act, exact opposite. I'm like, it's not really about the frame. It's about what's in it. Right. And when you gave that to me and then this other sign, which is pretty much like, hey, this is our house. This is our, our spot. I was just thinking, 
that's perfect for whatever wall. Cause like I knew what I had gotten you, you know, and I'm like, mm-hmm. Oh, this will be great. You know, in my mind, I'm like, this is perfect. Mm-hmm. Cause once you see what I got you and when I got you, I went back and listened or watched the video of our wedding, which you can see it's two seventeen two seventeen recovery.com slash wedding. If you haven't watched our wedding yet. And I listened to the vows that I choked out <laughs> Because I was about to cry, and it was really hard for me to get it out. And it's like, I'm like, I, Corey Winfield, and there's like 10 seconds of nothing. <laughs> Take you, Marty, listen. And I had like a little queer, like cry voice or whatever. But I put all that in the vows that I, because I, I wrote it out. Mm-hmm. I didn't write it out, but I had it printed out on our cricket machine in like gold. Mm-hmm. transfer paper stuff including uh, sigh yeah and like, cry voice cry voice Prince. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's cute and then there was one part where i messed up and i was gonna go to the tell death to his part but i had forgotten the richer and poorer or something like that so it was like tell and i like cry laughed so that's mm-hmm. in there cry laughing so yeah that's that's how it went down yeah and i want our kids and grandkids you know that's how it went down yeah. You know, it wasn't all smooth sailing. Yeah. It's well, it's cute because that just goes to show you it's a perfect example of like he's the photo guru in terms of like cropping pictures or you know, figuring out which pictures will go with what and editing them or photoshopping blah blah blah. I'm not that. But I knew that I had seen this frame online and I was determined to find it at one of the multiple multiple stores we have here in Traverse city having to do with hobby stuff and Mm -hmm. whatever. So I found, found it and, and I, I had a good picture, but it's, it was a crap picture of another picture that (laughs) it, I mean, it actually looks pretty good. So, but it's one of those perfect examples of like, you know, couples, you know, make up each other you know are my faults or your strengths and some places and and the other thing too is i think about that a lot as well in a relationship in general when you're it's important to have a healthy relationship anytime anyone you know that's just the only way it's ever going to work but um especially when you're in recovery because i knew that you know there was no way that i could have a relationship with somebody who was actively using or drinking, even if they didn't have a problem, they weren't didn't have an addiction really. It just wasn't something that was going to work for me. I just I didn't trust myself. I didn't. It's nothing that I could foresee me being successful at. So I knew that, and you know, some of the things that attracted me or attracted me to you was that I saw that you were determined and had your own goals and aspirations and whatever. And we've never tried to steer each other away from anything that we've ever wanted to do individually. Um, and, but just supported each other and what it is that, you know, like I'm facing this going back to grad school thing, which I was like up and down and up and down about. And you're like, yeah, do it, mm-hmm. you know, and work, work is important to me. And it does, you know, it monopolizes a lot of my time. Um, time that is irregular, odd hour time stuff, too. You know, that I knew that when I signed up for it, but I signed you up for it, too. So mm-hmm. it's kind of one of those things. But yeah, I'm getting better. Um, but I know, I know it's not your fault. I don't blame you. You know, when you get a phone call at wherever, doing whatever, and it's like, but I I know, and I guess I don't blame you for it. That's what you do, you know, but it just makes me mad. I'm like, do these people, are they stupid? (laughs) (laughs) Like, why are they being stupid? They know they're getting into my time now. (laughs) Tell them that. But no, it's, it's been amazing and everything that I could have ever hoped for, you know? With that said, and kind of what you just said, we had to be good with what we were doing on our own, you know, before we could make that decision to be together. And I remember when that happened for me was when you said, you know, I don't know who you think you are, you know, (laughs) like, 
Because I was like, yeah, but I don't, you know, if we start dating and, you know, something happens and break up, you know, how are you ever going to get over me? <laughs> I didn't <laughs> not, say it like not that. Not in those but, words, but no. you did say that. Yeah, and you're like, Psh, I don't know who you think I, I don't know who you think you are, but, um, yeah, and that's when I was like, wow, okay. So maybe, yeah. <laughs> All right, then. I like that. Because there's a lot of people out there that that's what they do. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know if I've ever done it. Probably, maybe, I don't know. But. When you first get clean and you start getting these feelings and emotions and, and somebody likes you and, oh, my gosh, and you feel like a little kid again. Oh, my, it feels so good. And you want to run to the first thing, but you ignore a lot of red flags a lot of a lot of the times. And I, I know I have. and You probably have, too. You know, it kind of happens. And you can sit here and tell everybody this is what's going to happen. Watch out. In one ear, right out the other. Mm-hmm. Until you go through, until you experience it. At least for me, I had to. Uh, people told me, and I'm just like, yeah, whatever, man. It's different. I'm different. We're different. People don't know us, you know, or whatever people say. And now, now I had to go through it too. And this time it was much, I had a much clearer vision of what I wanted. You know, I I prayed about it. I, I told God, you know, I want a woman that, I can love who will love me back and who will cook. No, I was was thinking of a joke though, actually, but no, but for real, I, I wanted, I wanted that. And then you come along and it's like, Hey, wait a minute. You know, this is, this is the kind of woman that I'm I'm looking for. Let me break up with her. (laughs) <laughs> See how that goes. You yeah, know, but, it was it was a journey to get to get mm-hmm. to where we are now. But everything happens the way it was supposed to, and yeah, I'm just super happy, and I couldn't be happier, really. Yeah, me too. I just I love it, and I never thought being married. I I see movies and you know other, I guess TV shows. They kind of mock being married, you know, like, oh, bro, you're married, oh, you know, and I, I don't ever feel that way. I feel like it's just, a, like, it's a great thing, mm-hmm. you know, and I can wear my married pants to the <laughs> store. Uh-huh. It's like, I just leave the house, and I'm, like, in pajama pants, and, like, who cares? I'm married, you know, I can go out however I want. Right. It's, it's so freeing. <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad there's those perks for you. hmm Yeah. Yeah. But. It's a good day overall, though. It was a good day. I guess we weren't feeling so hot. You weren't feeling hot. My stomach's still uh-huh. like, oh, I'm just so afraid it's going to jump back into acute pancreatitis again. It hurts so bad. And this morning it was even feeling a little, eh. Uh-huh. And I just, I really don't want to go through that again. It was a lot of pain. Yeah, we're hoping that's not going to happen. Mm-mm. But it, hopefully it doesn't. <laughs> Hopefully not. Right. And uh, you and I both have sciatica and we know somebody else. Well, quite a few people who have it. And I know it was um, overheard in a conversation. Uh, one of our friends, one of somebody we know, mm-hmm. another person has it and, you know, they're going through it. And I had talked to this person months ago and I was like, man, you got to do these. I call them kegels, but it's like you just you tighten your core. And that's the only thing that's ever helped me. And I finally got approved to go and have an MRI again. Yeah. So Sorry. that's potentially going to be a surgery that will help you. Yeah, we can look into it. But they kept giving me the runaround before. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. It was just like, uh, do I do it again? And they denied me. And then I wrote a little letter saying, here's why I don't agree with your decision. So I, I don't want to say filed a protest, but something similar to that. Mm-hmm. And then they were going back and said, okay, you can have it. Mm-hmm. But for this guy, I know, whatever, a friend of mine, you know who he is. Uh, I, I just told him, you know, do those exercises because you do learn things in physical therapy that will help you and then strengthening your core. But, man, when that happens, when it goes down your leg like that, mm-hmm. it, it, for me, it was like, oh, nine months you know, before I can get rid of this thing. I mean, it was just constant pain. Yeah, it's totally debilitating and extremely painful, and it's no joke. No. And 
you know, my advice is to be very careful. I went around it, the first time this happened and drinking for me was the only thing that would numb the pain. And that's because it made me pass out. So I then decided, well, I'm going to go, I guess they call it doctor shopping where I went to this other doctor who was out of network because the people that I saw knew about my drinking and they wouldn't give me any kind of pill. They wouldn't give me like any opiates or anything like that. So I had a doctor shop, you know, like I think that's what they call it. Right. Mm-hmm. I went to this guy who was out of network and he's like, all right, well, here, I'm going to give you a piss test first. And I was like, all right, yeah, for, for, go ahead, you know? Mm-hmm. And then he did and he, he prescribed me some and I thought, this is it. This is going to help me. And I went and picked up the prescription. I got home, took some. Nothing. It didn't do anything. So I took some more. It didn't do anything for the pain. I was so disappointed. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know why it didn't do anything for the pain. I mean, the, the sciatica and the pain that I was having, you know, I have two... Um, discs that are herniated in my back and that pain is like no other you know i've had broken ribs where, and they gave me hydrocodone or something like that oh that took the pain away mm-hmm. you know but that nerve pain like that's yeah. no joke man yeah you know so to run out and try to to do things to alleviate the pain you know illegally you know even though technically i did it legally but if you're in uh, some kind of drug program or if you're on um, probation, if you're in a sober living house, you know, and you're being drug tested and that stuff pops up, you're not supposed to have it. You know, consequences are going to come with that. Yeah. And people will understand, yeah, you're in a lot of pain, but at the end of the day though, too, there's rules and you got to follow them. And like I said, for me, it didn't help anyway. So, you know, thankfully I wasn't on any of those programs around probation or anything, but I did try and it, it didn't work. Um, and that was so frustrating and it could be one of the most frustrating things you'll ever go through, but you know, go to the doctor, do their physical therapy. If they tell you to go back, you know, get the stuff done, you know, keep advocating for yourself. And that's where I think I gave up like five, six years ago, whatever, whenever I was going through all that, I gave up, you know, and in some insurance companies, maybe that's what they try to do to get people to give up. You know, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But after I had my MRI and it told me this is what the problem is, I was like, all right, well, I need surgery. And they're like, nope, more physical therapy. I'm like, are you, are you kidding me? Yeah. I think just mentally I was done. I was spent. And I just went back and drank and probably another rehab. And I don't know what happened after that. But I did. I just, I just gave up and thought, well, they're just going to keep sending me back there. But seeing you go through what you did you know, with your back and, you know, you pretty much advocated for yourself going, no, I want, I want this fixed, you know? And mm-hmm. yeah, they gave you physical therapy. You did it. And you're like, all right, I want this fixed, you know, like it's still not, not mm-hmm. gone. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think that lit a fire under me a little bit too, when they came back with the first, nope, we're not going to give you an MRI. You got to go back to physical therapy, you know, to, that motivated me to sit down and go, you know, I'm going to advocate for myself. I'm going to let them know I've already been through physical therapy. I already do the kegels. Mm-hmm. Or whatever exercises you guys, you know, told me to do. Like, I'm still doing them, but I still have back pain. Yeah. You know, so just keep doing what you're supposed to be doing. You know, keep going after it and don't give up like I did. And try to get it, try to get a fix as, as best you can. That's my advice from Undoctor Corey. <laughs> 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 anyway. Anyway. Yeah, just to do a short little podcast tonight to say, yeah, sorry, we weren't feeling hot last night, but this is our anniversary special, so. Yeah. It was awesome, and, and I'm glad you could celebrate our one-year anniversary of being married with us. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Said, if you didn't see the wedding or you want to see what an awesome, nice little wedding looks like, 217recovery.com slash wedding. Yeah, you can check it out. Yeah, It's not that are. long. No, it's not. It's 15 minutes. Plus, you can, you know, fast forward if you want to. Yeah. It'll sound like I was kind of crying, but it was just glitches in the the tape. Um, Yeah, sure. (laughs) Anyway, thanks again for listening. Resources online. Get the app if you haven't already. We're in the App Store. It's absolutely free. Listen to every single podcast we've ever done. Yeah.
Thanks, everybody. Cool. Have See a good ya. night. Thanks for listening to the 217 Recovery Podcast. Don't forget to check out our special episodes found only on the 217 Recovery app.